Okay, Unit 4 starts out uh, with a concept that we've been using this year, but maybe one that we didn't formally talk about. So it's one that we're going to actually go through pretty quickly. Um, it's one that you are familiar with, and that's the metric system and measurement. Uh, we're going to be working primarily with measurement and then this idea called the mole. And of the time that we spend on this, we'll spend much more time working on the mole. Uh, but anyway, this first video is a shorter video that recaps what we've learned and what we already know about the metric system, SI base units, and measurement. Uh, toward the end of the 1700s, Antoine Lavoisier, who we've, we've talked about already this year, and others started discussing a common system of measurement, and they developed what became known as the metric system. And the metric system was born uh, toward the very end of the 1700s. Um, the idea behind the metric system is establishing a standard base, and that base is going to be the number 10. Everything within the metric system operates on the principle of a power of 10. Each prefix within the metric system is going to be one power of 10 greater or less than the one next to it. The prefixes, you are somewhat familiar with most of them. Uh, you're probably familiar with kilo and hecto and maybe deca, deci, centi, and milli. Uh, this base area right here would be the middle section. This would be a standard measurement with out any other type of prefix. So when we're talking about these here, we're talking about meters, we're talking about liters. Um, notice we're not talking about kilometers, or we're not talking about centimeters, or centiliters, or milliliters. We're just talking about the base unit without any numerical prefix. Uh, everything below this on the list deals with the small. So we're talking 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001. Now note here that these first three all are one step in order. After those first three, however, we jump by three steps, three steps, three steps with micro, nano, and pico. There are prefixes that are smaller. Uh, for example, 10 to the negative 15th power is femto. And we do continue to get smaller. Uh, but for our purposes in our class, it'll be what we use. The same trend also develops as we get bigger. So when we have 10 to the first, second, and third, it's increments of just one step apiece. However, once you get bigger than kilo, we start jumping by three places again, with mega for million, giga for billion, and tera for trillion. So in order to convert, all we really have to do is move the decimal point. An old thing and an old adage, an old saying, I guess you could put it, that helps most people remember how these things go in order is King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. Where we have kilo, hecto, deca, the base unit, again that's no prefixes, deci, centi, and milli. So in order to convert one to the next, you count the number of spaces. So in our example below, we have 15 centimeters. Centimeters, we look at the prefix, centi is right here. And we're going to try and get to kilo. Kilo is way down here. So we count the number of spaces we have to move. One, two, three, four, five. We moved five spots to the left. Now another way of putting that is that we've moved five places towards a larger unit. So if our unit gets larger, our number has to get smaller. So we take the number 15, we take its decimal point at the end, and we move it five spots to the left. One, two, three, four, five. And we fill in the empty spots with zeros. Fifteen centimeters is equal to 0 0.00015 kilometers. We could take the same principle to address the second example. 732 deciliters right here, 2 milliliters right here. In this case, we are moving two spots to the right. So we take the decimal point after the two, and we move it two spots to the right. We're left with 73,200. This should be something you're fairly familiar with, so it's more of a review going through this. 
The international system, or the SI system, breaks down all types of measurement into seven basic units. Every other type of unit is a derivative or a combination of these seven basic units. We have time in the second, length with the meter, mass with the kilogram, temperature in Kelvin, which we'll talk more about down the road, mole, which we're going to be studying extensively, and then ampere and candela. Notice that there are three asterisks, or asterisks, I don't know the plural of that one, here. That's because we won't really be discussing these ones. Not to say that they're not important, but we won't be spending much time learning about those in chemistry. However, we will spend a great deal of time learning about the first five. Measurement's another important tool that we do need to address, uh, and there's all kinds of different ways to measure things. We can measure length, we can measure volume, we can measure mass. Here we have two pictures that denote different measurements. The first picture over on the left side is that of a triple beam balance, which measures mass. In order to correctly figure out we take this big piece, which is 300, add the next piece, which is 70, and finally the last piece. Now the last piece can be tricky. We know we have 3, but we're part of the way to 4. In this case here, we have 373 point, it almost looks like, 35, and that would be in units of grams. The picture on the right brings up something very, very important, and that's the curvature of the glass. And it's not just the glass, but rather the particles inside that adhere and cohere to each other that cause a curving. It's important to look at the scale when measuring this. Read the bottom of this meniscus. The value that we get when we figure this out is 78 milliliters. Reading the bottom of the meniscus is absolutely essential to getting the correct volume. Here we have two other pictures of different volumes. Can you figure out what those volumes are? Pause your video now to try and determine what these volumes come to. The volume on the left is 23 milliliters. The volume on the right, if you follow the bottom of the curve, is 30 milliliters. This final slide gives you even more practice. Take the time to write down these measurements and bring them into class tomorrow for discussion. That concludes our video on metric system, SI, and measurement.